Hello and welcome to Clady Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. In today's episode, I am going to be taking a picture frame, some beer bottles, and some fence pickets and turning it into this Victorian-inspired first aid kit. So let's go do this. Okay, I'm going to start off by cleaning my bottles. Just went and picked up some red stripe beer because I knew that the bottle shape was going to be closest to something Victorian. It was accessible, under six bucks for the six pack, so it's like a dollar a piece. To get me going, I do need to peel off all of these labels, which I had started to do with some of them. And then after I peel the label, there is a little bit of tackiness still on them. Spray on some Goo Gone. Use that to work off the goop. And then after I work this with the Goo Gone, I'll come in with some rubbing alcohol and probably a razor blade just to clean up the rest of the residue. Now I'm actually doing this before I start doing anything else because I want to give these bottles a chance to be sterilized. You can do sterilization in a number of different ways. One is to boil them for 10-15 minutes with a drop of vinegar. The other method is to run them through a dishwasher if you have a dishwasher that has a sanitation setting. Or you can just wash them really good with some hot soapy water, then spray them down with some rubbing alcohol on the inside, swish it around, set them out to dry. Because this is going to be first aid kit, I wanna make sure that I don't introduce any kind of bacteria when I transfer over my liquid items. My Goo Gone here is doing a decent job and just doing a little bit of scrubbing and the Goo Gone's taking it away. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on with that and I will sanitize and then we can begin discussing the cabinet itself. I picked up this frame for about 10 bucks at Walmart and I am using some leftover picket I have. This is a great way to do this cheaply. This is about five and a half inches in width and you can get a six foot long picket for it's around two bucks. Two pickets will take care of the whole box. I'm just gonna take some measurements from the outside of my frame. This is gonna vary on your frame. If you do not have access to a chop saw, you can most certainly have them cut your pickets for you at Home Depot. You do wanna make sure that you deduct the thickness of whatever wood you're using. Then when I go to put the box together, the one that's gonna be running in this direction is gonna sit on the inside of those other two boards. I need to deduct the thickness of this piece of wood times two, one for each edge before I make that cut. This is something you kind of have to do a little bit of math on the spot. The picket can vary in thickness. So I'm gonna cut two of my lengths for my width. I'm gonna cut three because one of those is gonna become an inbound shelf. Okay, I've given these a light sand, thrown on some primer. It allows me to see any of the imperfections where the knots were, things that might have any little bits of holes that need to be filled in. So now that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of this drywall spackle. For jobs like this that are gonna be painted, this stuff works great, it dries much faster, and I'm gonna be painting these up with some cherry red. I was kind of up in the air. Originally, I wanted to maybe paint up that frame and then I realized it still has this Victorian feel if I leave the natural wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that frame, but because this is a first aid kit, I think I can get away with the outside edges of this being red. So I have leftover garden paint from doing the garden arbors. So I don't know, should be cool. I'm gonna start assembling my parts. They're still a bit tacky, but I need to get a move on to using my countersink bit. I'll be countersinking some holes for my screws and then just assembling with some basic uh, wood screws. So I have my two long pieces and then I have my middle pieces here. My picket fencing here is not exactly square, it's a little bit warped, but 
That's what happens when you're using cheap wood trying to do a cheap project. It'll kind of even itself out once they put the screws in though. Now, if I was gonna buy, say, Select Pine, you're probably looking at, oh, about $15 just for one board that's eight feet long. If you went with the hardwood, you're probably looking at double that. So if I'm just dealing with a little bit of warpage here and there, you know, I don't mind that. When the backing goes on, it's gonna help hold it all together as well. I just kind of rigged this up here. I have the frame sitting on top and then I put my bottle just slightly inside here. When this shelf goes in, I wanna be able to see my bottles. I'm just gonna take a measurement this way. I think I'm gonna go at nine inches. Very gently putting a pencil line in and I'm gonna follow it up with my square so that I can make sure I can line up the shelf on the outside as well as the inside. Transfer that to out here so I know where I'm drilling. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my measurements so that I can cut my back and I'm just gonna be cutting up a piece of eighth inch thick Luon. And I'm gonna deduct an eighth of an inch just to make sure that the back kind of tucks in a little bit. Let's get this filled, set aside and move on to my back. To attach the back, I am just going to use some brass screws and leave this back natural. I have some decorative antiquing wax that I'm going to apply to this red just to tone it down. And I'm just gonna use a rag to just wipe it on. We're almost there. So I think what I'm gonna do is run off some kind of vinyl on my Cricut to read like apothecary something here just to have some, some bit of decorative interest. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that. If you don't own one and you just want to put a decal, you can order vinyl stickers on Etsy. You can make something really simple with some contact paper or even paint on a design on the back of the glass which is some acrylic paint to give your piece a bit of interest. I've taken a razor blade to remove that back flap because I want this to be see-through and I started to remove all of the little tabs that hold on the frame. I just took a pair of pliers and carefully tried to remove them. I mean, it did do some tearing, but I'm gonna just touch that up with the Sharpie marker. This is on the inside of the piece anyways. I did debate removing the entire mat. I realized after trying to take up one corner, it was gonna create a massive mess of cleanup and it just wasn't worth doing. And the frame also had these little hanger tabs. I just undid the screw. Last night I was thinking about hanging this thing. I realized that I have forgotten to include something to do the hanging. They do make very strong versions of of these that you can pick up in the picture hanging aisle. I don't feel like that's enough support for me, especially here in California. We are prone to earthquakes. I cut a piece of furring strip and I'm gonna remove the back and install this on the back side. Driving two screws through this is much more secure, it's properly anchored. So the next move is gonna be getting the hinges on. Now I purchased brass hinges, so I'm gonna be installing these hinges on this end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give myself a 
measurement on the side of my frame and the side of the box. This is just pick a measurement and go with it. Yeah, I'm gonna do three inches and I'm just gonna measure three inches on either side. Now I am going to be recessing these hinges so that the door will sit flush. You don't necessarily have to do this. This is another step and it involves chiseling. You could just attach your hinges to the outside, but just know if you do do that, you'll end up with a gap. So I'm just going to get my second line in there. And then I'm going to be just removing the thickness of what this is. This is my Veritas marking gauge. It's real handy, so I just set it at the depth and can come in and it will score a line. I'm just going to chisel out this little section. And there we go. So for this one, I am only going to remove the mat board. Even if you don't want to go chiseling through your wood, just remove the mat board. And I'm going to do this with just a razor blade. Oh no, you do in my coffee now. Thanks for splashing coffee all over me. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. And all I'll be doing is pre-drilling a tiny hole here and driving in my screws that came with the kit and my lid will be on. Hinges are on. The cabinet case is pretty much finished. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my holes and touch those up. We're gonna move on to prepping the things that are gonna go inside of this cabinet. Before I start filling my bottles, I went ahead and printed out some labels. I just Googled vintage labels. And I was able to find a blank template typed in what I wanted and I printed it on a full sheet of sticky paper. I'm gonna be applying these to the bottles, but to make it a cleaner look, I'm gonna cut these out. After I printed this, I really wanted to seal the inks, so I top coated my print with matte clear enamel. I also printed some smaller labels on regular plain paper for my boxes that are gonna be holding my bandages. I did a video on how to make these boxes. I will link that in the description. And that reminds me, if you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. I found these corks at Home Depot and they fit just perfectly inside these bottles and then I'm good to go. All right, here she is finished. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already and I hope to see you soon.